As we move through the All-Star break, Mike Napoli is elected to participate in the, or he's voted to participate in the Home Run Derby. And he's also our only All-Star for the season. That was a bit surprising, but uh, we have had a lot of, I guess, of our, of our top guys not do or not perform sort of like their top guy selves. But anyway, um, right after this, just literally 10, 5 days after the All-Star game, Napoli goes down for 1-2 to two months with a strained hamstring. So immediately we knew we needed to go out and get a new bat. So... I go after Ben Zobers from the Oakland A's. We throw in Stephen Moya, T. Gordon, and Zach Lee. And we're also going to pick up Tommy Malone and Dan Straley to add some pitching depth to our team. Um, and you can see Ronaldo is going to get the start today. He is not usually in the rotation, but he's taking Owens' a spot. Owens threw, I think, I don't know, 18, 19 starts as a 5.84 ERA. And we've clearly got to do something about that spot. Now, it's not a very, it's not a, it's not a terribly important spot because that guy's not going to pitch in the postseason for us. Kelly's likely to be our fourth starter. Um, but we do want to get someone solid down there for the last, I don't know, 10 starts that the guy's going to make. Um, and the team hasn't really been too badly affected by it. I mean, even though we haven't had great individual performances out of everybody, we're still 20 games over 500, we're 63 and 43. And there isn't a lot to be concerned with. I wasn't, I was thinking about making a move, um, even before Napoli went down. But when Napoli went down, I decided, okay, we'll pick up Zobers for now. And then Zobers is versatile enough that... He can replace Betts, he can replace Cicchini, we can do a lot of things with Ben Zobris now. We still have some, we have a couple of days left before the deadline, so we still might have a move or two to make. Um, I'm not too sure, maybe it's an Adrian Beltre, maybe it's, I don't know, Aramis Ramirez, someone like that. We'll see, um, maybe a third baseman or center fielder. Like I said, Zobris is versatile enough, he gives us a lot of different options, so. Anyway, Ronaldo on the mound today. Like I said, he's getting the start for Owens. He made a couple of starts before this. This is his third start of the year, and he's going to induce a 5-4-3 to four to three double play. You can see, take a look at today's lineup. This is not a usual lineup, but Zobrisson left today. We have Cicchini DHing with Robinson Cruz playing third base. Now, Cruz is the guy we signed in the offseason, called up after D. Gordon was shipped off to the Oakland A's. And we're going to be opposed by real-life Oakland A, Jeff Samarja, who was re-signed by the Cubs in this franchise and uh, is in the midst, I think, of the first year of his new contract so Ben Zobris welcomes him to Boston with a solo shot over the right field wall and into the bleachers out there a solo home run for Ben Zobris in I think maybe he played for the team for like a week now I think so Zobris though he was hot over the first week I think he was like five for his first ten or something he was really hitting well and um I think he's slashing somewhere close to 270 350 400 which is pretty much what he slashed in real life last year that's sort of what we expect out of him. Um, his real value comes in his defensive versatil versatility. So, anyway, later in the inning, Giancarlo Stanton lines out or grounds out to the third baseman there, fires on the first in time. So, we're through one. It is one nothing Boston, but Chris Bryant's going to change that with a two-run shot to deep right center field. That's going to go over the bullpen and into the stands. One of the deepest part of the parks. That was after, I believe, Anthony Rizzo reached base to get the inning started. And then Chris Bryant takes the first pitch he sees and just crushes it. So Chris Bryant, uh, two Theo Epstein draft picks going head-to-head -head right there with Renato and uh, Chris Bryant right there. But anyway, a two-run home run from one of the best young power hitters in this game of baseball in Major League or Minor League Baseball or any of that. So Bryant showing off his power, and it is 2-2-1 Chicago right now. Ronaldo off to a bit of a slow start. Command issues. He's got the. He's got very good heat. It's really hard to pitch with a um, a three pitch pitcher, especially when one of those pitches is a curveball, because the curveball is really hard to control. Um, and when you're just relying on fastball changeup, it's hard to go through an order three times. So Ronaldo, I could see him being a pen option for us uh, later in the year, like come playoff time. I think he'd be really good out of the pen, like with his heat and his curveball and. I think he could, I just think he would be really. I think he would excel out of the playoff, in the playoffs, out of the, out of the bullpen. But here we go. This was a big base running mistake on my part. Um, I actually held up there a little bit because I thought that might be caught. So Cespedes gets caught at third here. They go to second for the out, and Cespedes actually sneaks home there. So go down an R, as an RBI single. We get the run home. But uh, would have liked a little bit more than that because next batter Cicchini could have driven in Bogarts here with the base hit back up the middle. So continuing the inning here, Cicchini batting I believe seventh tonight. With Zobrist, we do move him up to the two-hole, and we put Pedroia lead off, which means we can move Chikini and Betts and uh, combine them with Swihart and usually go 7-8-9. So. Next batter is Robinson Cruz. He hits a ball into left field for a base hit. We'll hold Chikini at third, but it's going to be first and third with just one out for the next batter, and it will be Blake Swihart for a second pitch of the A-B. Swihart hits it to deep left field, but that's going to be caught by the left fielder. I actually thought that was headed for the wall. 
bad, bad read on it by my part, and they're going to double off Robinson Cruz at first, and that will end the inning. So, bad, bad base running, bad awareness on my part right there. Just uh, thought that was going to hit the wall, but anyway, two outs, and Anthony Renato dealing with this heat. He's just, he gets, his fastball was so effective tonight. I think he had, ends the game with nine strikeouts, I believe, and I think eight of them, maybe seven, came on the fastball. You just, when he locates it, it's really hard to catch up to. So, Pedroia works a four or five pitch walk right there. Next batter is Ben Zobris. Pedroia stealing second. He will be safe on the place. So we get a man in scoring position with no one out here for Ben Zobris. The margin of the one two count. And Zobris does a great job of hitting this one into right field. Thinking of hitting it in the air enough, or hitting it deep enough. He could have hit it on the ground. It wouldn't have mattered. But either way, we advance that runner up to third. So now a man on first with, or a man on third with just one out for Alan Craig, one of the best contact hitters in baseball at least in this game, and that is going to be grounded er, to the shortstop, throw to first in time, and that will drive in the run. So we score a run without a hit right there, and we take a 3-2 to two lead. Now here's Anthony Rizzo, 1-2 and two count, and Rizzo's going to line this one. It's just off the glove of Robinson Cruz. He cannot come up with it and fire in time. So Rizzo reaches base here to get things going in the top of the fourth inning. Next batter is going to be Chris Bryant, already with a homer today. He lines this one under the glove of Cruz, and it's going to be two men on with no one out here for the Chicago comes in the heart of the order coming up. Next batter will be Mike Olt. First pitch of the A-B to Olt, and he's going to ground this one to the shortstop. Bogarts, the second for one, on to first, in time, and it's a 6-4-3 double play. Now a man on third with two outs for Nate McLeod. 3-2 the count. That ball misses, or that one misses high for ball four. So that'll put a runner on first now, and it'll be Justin Ruggiano up the first pitch of the A-B to Ruggiano. And he hits it to deep right center field. Stanton on the move. Can he get there? No, he cannot. It just goes over his glove, and it'll one-hop up over the bullpen for a ground rule double. Take a look at the replay just over the glove of Stan, and then we catch a bit of a break there. Runner from first likely would have scored if that one stays in the park. Next batter is Wellington Castillo. He grounds it to Bogarts. Fired a first in time, and we escape the inning. But a run does, or uh, yeah, one run comes home for the Chicago Cubs, and it is three to 3-3 three now in the top of the fifth. Arismendi Alcantara up, and he goes down on the changeup swing right there, looking for the fastball. Good, good um, velocity management, or whatever you want to call it. Well, good sequencing, I should say, by Blake Swayard. And then we strike cash on the fastball. So now we're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Giancarlo standing up, and he strikes out swinging on the splitter that was left up in the zone. But Stanton looking fastball. Good change of velocity from Samarja. And Samarja really settled in here after the uh, rough couple of first innings. He gets a, gets a gets a generous call there from the umpire, but strikeouts, bo strikes out Bogarts nonetheless. And both pitchers really settling in after a rough first couple of innings for each of them. And we are 3-6 here. Score is still knotted at 3. Ronaldo comes back out for the top of the seventh inning. Here is, I believe, Justin Ruggiano, and he's going to go down swinging on that high fastball. So two away in the inning. Next batter will be Wellington Castillo. The 2-1 count to Castillo, and that pitch is hit to deep left field, and it is gone just over the wall into the green monster seeds. A fastball that, like I said, Ronaldo sometimes struggles with his command a little bit, and boy, he could not have grooved that one any more than Ronaldo did. It was fast, but it was right over the plate, and it was too flat to get by a major league hitter in Wellington Castillo, so... A 4-3 lead now for the Cubs. Bottom of the 7th, Samarja still in the game. 2-2 two two the count. Swihart grounds it to Rizzo at first. Flip onto Samarja in time, and that would do it for Jeff Samarja. He gets through 7 innings, only allowing the 3 runs. He leaves with a lead in the top of the 8th now. Anthony Renato strikes out the first batter of the inning, Starling Castro. And that would do it for Renato. We're just looking for him to get the righty out. So we're going to turn it over to Antonio Bastardo to face a pair of lefties coming up. First one will be Anthony Rizzo. Actually, I think it's just one lefty. Rizzo up. He goes down swinging on that slider. And now we had a couple of righties do up after this, but neither of them hit lefties particularly better than they hit righties. And Nate McClough was three batters away, so we leave Bastardo in for the last out of the uh, with the eighth inning here, and get, he gets Chris Bryant. Again, another strikeout. Now, Jose Veras is going to come on for the bottom of the eighth, a man who gave up the grand slam to Shane Victorino in Game 6 of the ALCS last year. So, obviously not great members from here, but he gets a 6-4-3 double play on Alan Craig to end the inning. So, he gets through in a uh, basically what was a 1-2-3. Eighth inning. So on to the top of the ninth. Name McClouth up, and McClouth would go down. So Bastardo records three strikeouts, getting four outs. We'd eventually turn it over to Ruby De La Rosa to get the final out of this inning with a righty do up. Actually, I think a couple of righties do up. De La Rosa, not great numbers this year, but he's got great stuff. I love using him out of the bullpen. And top of the ninth, you can see here it is Justin Ruggiano. who's going to nibble one. It is going to be stabbed by Craig. Flip on to De La Rosa. A bit of uh, some flash there from Craig. A nice little, nice little shovel toss. But Steve Ciszek will come on to 
uh, to face the heart of the Red Sox order, the meat of the order coming up here in the bottom of the ninth. And Giancarlo Stanton walks there to get a man on with no men out to lead off the inning. So good, good start to the inning. We're going to bring on Daniel Nava to pinch hit here for, uh, I think it was, uh, who hit here? I don't even remember who was supposed to hit here, but what happened was I was going to pinch run with Mookie Betts, but instead I accidentally pinch hit with him. So at that point I wanted Nava over Betts, so I just wasted Betts, but... Nava strikes out looking, so now two away, and that's going to bring up our next batter, Garen Cicchini, the last hope, the 0-1 count, and that's going to get away from the catcher, Castillo, standing after stealing second, heading for third, he's in there safely, so the tying run now just 90 feet away for the rookie, Garen Cicchini, the 2-2 two two count, and Cicchini lines it, stabbed by Castro, flipped to first, in time, and a web gem by Starling Castro, ends the game, and the Cubs win it 4-3, so what a finish to a very, very good game. Very entertaining game. Cubs pick up the 43 victory, though, and that is going to do it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you did enjoy. It doesn't matter. Peace. Oh, and by the way, I'm only going to have two more regular season episodes, and then we're going to get into the playoffs. Yeah.